What's going on YouTube today? We're doing to What's going on YouTube today? We're going to talk about baby WAF or the What's going on YouTube? We're going to What's going on YouTube today? We're going to talk about baby waffles order. And again, this is part of the OWASP top 10 track from Hack the Box. So in this channel, we're going to demonstrate a simple application of XML external entity injection attack. So go ahead, deploy the machine and download the files. The files are the source code of the application that we're going to test. So if you jump to the virtual machine, my machine, and if we navigate to the main page, I'm going to turn this off for now. Let's refresh the page. All right. As you can see here, this is the basic web page or the main page of the application. And we have here um, options, waffles or ice cream. So we can select waffles or ice cream, or we can select both. Enter the quantity, and we can click on the order to have the order prepared. So if you click on, let's say waffles, and select two as the quantity order, as you can see, it gives us the prompt, your waffles order has been submitted successfully. Now, how do we know that this is a simple application of XML external entity injection attack? Simply by looking at the title of the page XXE, which stands for XML external entity injection. Or XML external entity. The attack we're going to use is XML or XSE injection attack. So in order to demonstrate this attack, we're going to have to intercept the HTTP request that is sent when we uh, order waffles or ice cream. So we're going to have that done by clicking on perp, enable perp, the proxy, going back here and turn on the intercept. And we're going to order two quantities. We're going to have the request intercepted. As you can see, it's a post request to the slash API slash order, the path that handles the order retrieval or the order processing as you can see the content type is json and it's represented by the these tags table number and the food so if we are going to demonstrate xml or ecstasy attack we're going to send this to repeater and the first step in the process is to change the content type since we're going to exploit xml or ecstasy we're going to change this to xml now we're going to write a simple XML payload. So in the notes file here that you have if you are subscribed to the channel membership, I'm going to grab this example, which is a payload. I'm going to replace this here like that. And send. All right. I just clicked on send to have this, um, as you can see, formatted. And in here we're going to type XML. And let's assume it is version 1.0. I'm going to end the tag. Okay. So the document type. Now here you can choose choose the name you want. For me, I'm going to keep this as root. Entity. And here is the payload. This is the payload. You can again name it or give it a name as you will. We can do name it payload exploit xsc whatever you want most importantly is what comes after the payload as you can see here this is a payload to read the contents of the password file in the linux system in order to have this executed we're going to have to call the payload or the entity name that is the name that happens to be in this case it's payload so we call it by appending or prepending ampersand uh, to the name of the payload and as you can see here we have um, semicolon but obviously this is not working as you can see we are receiving this error we need to select a food option first so what's going on now if you go back to the challenge as you can see we have here files attached to the challenge now if you try if we go ahead and open the file okay so we have these files if you go to controllers and click on the order controller this is the file that handles that handles the uh, process of ordering or placing the orders we're going to reload 
let's take a look here so we have the function order right and inside the function order we have an if and else so as you can see here refers to retrieve the contents from the user and the first thing is it evaluates if we have actually selected food quantity by using the food tag so if we did as you can see it gives a set of success and the order has been submitted if we don't submit food quantity it's going to say you need to select the food option first now this is this happens two times one time if the content type is xml and the other time is if, if is if the content type is json that's why that's why by by actually taking a look or inspecting the source code of the order controller we can actually uh, determine that xml is an allowed input in the process so what we have to do here we have just to use the food tag and the order tag as you can see they are used here first by the order and we have the food so we have to use these tags in order for the uh, input to be considered um, valid and processed by the application if we don't provide the food and order tags here um, it's going to always complain and say you need to select a food option first as we are um, receiving right here so let's create two tags or let's go back yeah create the first tag is going to be order and under the order comes the food tag can we change this or change that to food and here food and we're going to send this send as you can see we received the contents of the password file so it means that the XML payload has been executed now apart from understanding the logic of the application if you go back to the source code here another thing to mention is that the input is passed directly without any sort of filtering so here as you can see the input is taken and it is immediately processed with no filtering mechanisms so this code if we add a whitelist or blacklist or some sort of filtering mechanism to the input it's going to be it's going to be um, a code that works without any problem if you go back Again here, the objective is to read the flag. So let's assume that the flag is under its own directory. Uh, we click on send and we receive the flag. And that's how we conclude this challenge. Can I stop the instance? So that was it, guys. In the next upcoming videos, I'm going to try to expedite the process of finishing this track by finishing up the rest of the challenge maybe we're gonna next video we're gonna take two challenges or three challenges in one video the, the, the objective is to understand every single bit about the uh, exploitation of uh, the OWASP top 10 so that's what that was for today I hope you guys like that and I will see you in the next video